The following is a presentation of WGN Sports. It's a beautiful day for baseball, and there they all are. How many of them would be hit out of the ballpark? A capacity crowd on hand. The first lady of the nation will be on hand also. Stay tuned for baseball. Chicago Cubs Baseball on WGN. The Cubs are brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for a crisp, clean, classic taste. Buick and your better Buick dealers. The new symbol for quality in America. Builder Square. For all of your home improvement needs, we'll get you squared away. Buy Pepsi. Be young. Have fun. Drink Pepsi. Aflac. Insuring over 35 million people worldwide. Your local 76 dealers who invite you to go with the spirit, the spirit of 76. And by Southwest Airlines. Why Southwest Airlines? It's just plain smart. Hello again, everybody. Harry Carey with Steve Stone. Hey, listen, nobody, I, I don't care what the law of average it says. No one pitcher can beat another team 27 times and only lose to them four times during his career. So I think that Doc Good is trying to do that today is not going to do it. Even more than that, Harry, the Mets and the Cubs have met four times in openers. The Mets have won them all. But Harry, in this year, 50th season of broadcasting, the Cubs, I think, owe you one by now. I, I think they do, too. And we'll be back now with the starting lineup in a moment. Tom Brenneman. Here are the lineups for the Mets. Vizcaino, former Chicago Cub leading off. There's Dallas Green, too, the Mets manager. Todd Hunley, the catcher. Kevin McReynolds in left field. Bobby Bonilla at third base. Jeff Kent, the second baseman. Dave Segui at first base. Jeremy Burditz in right field. Ryan Thompson in center field. And Dwight Gooden, who's beaten the Cubs 26 times during his career while losing to them only four times. Now that Pepsi presents the Cubs defense of Derek May and left Rhodes, Tuffy Rhodes in center, Sammy Sosa in right, Bouchel, Dunstan, Sandberg, and Grace around the infield, Mike Morgan pitching, and Rick Wilkins catching. And with us in the booth, Boy, I knew, I knew with the first lady of the nation on hand that Irv Cupson would be here too. I know you got a mouthful of hot dog, go ahead. Mary, I just came up to wish you 50 more years. I, I want to wish you 50 more hot dogs at the same time. You and I have Thank you grown, very much. grown up together, 50 years each. I got you beat by one year, 51. But it's a joy to see you working so well. And we had the same attitude. I hope to be found terminal over my terminal. And I know you want to be found in the same way in the broadcasting booth. Thank you very much, Governor. Thank you very much. Herb cuts him the first pitch. And the count now, 2-0. and oh, On Jose Vizcaino, former star infielder of the Cubs. Ball three. And Mike Morgan, who's had a little trouble in spring training, Away to a rocky start, three balls, no strikes on Jose Vizcaino, 26-year-old infielder. There's a strike. You had a look at last year when Morgan went 10-15, and 15, an ERA of 403. He did pick up 207 innings, and there's his career against the Mets, a high ERA, 442. Ball four, and he walks. The first man he faces, and that for Mike Morgan is very uncharacteristic. He usually walks very few. There is Tom Trebelhorn, the new manager of the Cubs, going into his first season. He successfully managed at Milwaukee for a few years. And here's Dallas Green, the manager of the Mets. And Dallas did a 
just an outstanding job as a general manager for the Cubs about 10, year, 10 years ago. Now the reason why Hundley's hitting second is the fact that he can move along the runners. So let's see if Dallas Green decides to run early. Todd Hundley actually lost the spot to Kelly Stinnett in spring training. And a lot of people are surprised that Todd Hundley is starting today. Well, how can they not start him? He's hit a, a ton against the Cubs. He had only 11 home runs last year against everybody. He hit four or five against the Cubs. There's a strike off. So Todd Hundley, who hit 228 last year, 11 homers, 53 RBI. His dad is Randy Hundley, who caught for the Cubs. And was one of the stars of that 69 ball club. Hey, good breaking ball over the inside corner. And Todd Hundley didn't like that. Rick Wilkins looking towards the dugout. I wonder if they're calling any pitches for him, Steve. Well, I think, Harry, what they might be doing is perhaps calling a pitch out. But here from the our new sky camera, you'll see the last pitch over the inside corner. Jim Quick points it out. And Todd Hundley in a hole 0-2. And, and you see Wilkins looking again at the dugout. I know they, they call the pitch outs from there. And Harry, probably an occasional pitch. 0-2 the count. The this guy you know back. Yeah, I don't know. This ought to be a great year. We not only have the sky high camera, we got new microphone. I know. This is, this is <laughs> and hard, new equipment. Hard to believe. Oh, and two the count. Fastball high and inside. <laughs> Arnie says every 50 years we get new equipment. No, it's got to be less than that, Arnie. Technology moves along so quickly in our business. One ball, two strikes. Whoa! He struck him out. Todd Hundley called out on strike, and he was bewildered by that pitch. Let's see if we can see it again. From the rooftop camera, you'll see a tailing fastball. It comes back over the middle of the plate. Hundley thought the ball was inside, but that one not only caught the corner, it caught the whole plate, and Jim Quick rung him up. And so Mike Morgan is fan one and walk one, and here's Kevin McReynolds, who hit 244, 245 for Kansas City's Royal. One strike and nothing. Mark Grace came off the bag and so did this Caino on the pitch. Nick Reynolds is one of 13 new Mets players. 13 different faces in this opening day as opposed to last opening day against the Rockies. So there's a massive changeover on this club. Yeah, but the, this guy's not really a new face. <laughs> he was with the Mets during the Palmy days. It became very terrible days. And they traded away a few years ago. Now he's back with them. McReynolds. Ground ball base hit in the left field. And the Mets threaten. Runners of first and second. And here is Bobby Bonilla who hits a ton in this ballpark. Want to wish the old pitchers Cy Johnson, 87 years old, a quick recovery. Living in Sheridan now. The last man to strike out Babe Ruth three times. An old time pitcher. Played with the Reds, the Phillies, the Cardinals, the Boston. A lot of people gone from last year's ball club, and there are some of them. Vince Coleman, now with Kansas City. He probably never light up another firecracker in his life. Here's a pitch a little bit low and outside. Bobby Bonilla. Runners at first and second one away. In otherwise dismal Mets year last year, Bonilla still hit 34 home runs, drove in 87. So he filled his part of the bargain. You know, that surprised me. I thought he hit 34 against the Cubs alone last year. It seemed like it. It seemed like most of them were in this park, Harry. And, and especially from the left side where he's a lot more dangerous. Yes, and he also hit him right-handed too. I well recall. 
This is his favorite ballpark. The wind is blowing out today. Ooh, did he have a home run cut? But he fouls it. Two balls and the strike. Mike Morgan, the number one pitcher of the Cubs. Bonilla did have a pretty good spring. He only hit one home run, but he did hit 366. The Mets as a team had a few guys who hit the ball well, but like the Cubs, they've got some pitching problems, especially in the number four and five spot in the rotation. Two balls and the strike. He pulls a foul, and the count evens up. Two and two. Texas opening up at Yankees Stadium. The Yankees out in front, one to nothing at the end of one. Detroit at Boston, no score at the end of one. Seattle and Cleveland leading one to nothing at the end of two. The president threw out the first ball in Cleveland, and the first lady is here in Chicago doing the same thing. They struck him out. A change of pace, and that really fooled Bobby Bonilla. Second strikeout for Morgan. Take another look at it. Morgan throws the off-speed curveball and has Bonilla way out in front of this one. Good stop by Rick Wilkins. From the sky camera on the roof, you'll see the foot out in front, the hands go forward, and the ball doesn't get there. And that's a big out. Well, I guess he just gave a classic example how you should pitch to Bobby Bonilla. Who has worn out the Cubs previously. Here's Jeff Kemp. He hit 21 homers last year. Fouls the first pitch. He hit 270. He was acquired in a trade, and he's become their regular second baseman. That was the trade that was with Toronto, Harry. Jeff Kent and Ryan Thompson came at the end of the year, and they traded David Cohn away. Now, Cohn is with Kansas City. Toronto has a ton of talent in their organization, and that's how they get their late season deals. Oh, and won the count. There's no doubt they really do make very telling late season deals. The pitch swung and fouled it off. 0 oh 2. He's had good cuts. Seattle now leads in Cleveland. 2 to nothing at the end of three. The strides that Jeff Kent made last year were defensive. They thought he could hit. They felt he could hit when he came from Toronto. But he came as a liability at second base. And the second half of last year, he really tightened it up. Oh, and two of the count. The Yankees now lead Texas three to nothing at the end of three. Bouncing ball, foul down the third base line. Oh, and two of the count. Kent's a big kid. Well, when you talk about big guys in baseball, just about the biggest is standing in the first base coach's box. And that's a man that you're very familiar with, Harry Frank yeah. Howard. You saw him take many a cut in the big leagues. Now, what a wonderful man he is. Just say, the sweetheart of a guy. Oh, and two the count. A little bit low on outside. One ball, two strikes. And I tell you, Rick Wilkins really working out there, going to his knees a lot. Morgan trying to keep the ball down. The wind blowing out. Beautiful day for baseball. That evens it up two and two. Top of the first. Two on, two out. No score. Jeff Kent. They're playing him a shade towards the left. That ought to be an easy third out. Over to first to retire the side. Sandberg throws out Jeff Kent. One hit, no runs, two men left, no errors. We go on the bottom of the first, no score. Pepsi presenting the Cubs lineup. There you see the manager, Tom Treblehorn. Rhodes in center field. Sandberg at second base. Grace at first base. May in left field, Sosa in right, Wilkins catching, Bouchel at third, Dunson the shortstop, and Morgan the pitcher. And there's the Pepsi Cubs lineup. 
the New York defense, McReynolds in left, Thompson in center, Bernitz in right, Bonilla at third, Descaino at short, Kent at second, Sagi at first. Doc Gooden on the mound, and Todd Henley is the catcher. The umpires are Jim Quick by the plate, Bob Davidson in first, Gary Davis in second, and Bill Hahn in third. That evens it up a ball and a strike. Now, Tuffy Rhodes has been an outstanding player ever since he joined the Cubs last fall. Curveball a little high. Two balls and the strike. Gooden has an almost un unbelievable record against Chicago teams. Against the Chicago Cubs. Ball three. 26 victories, only four defeats, and I think he's 12 and one at Wrigley Field. Unbelievable. Swings, fouls it off. Well, the Cubs managed to beat him twice in his inaugural season of 1984. That's when he was 19 years old. They roughed him up the first time, getting him for six runs. Second time, they got him for five runs. Then he pitched a gem against him in September. But after that first year, Dwight Gooden has been close to untouchable. And it seems like, doesn't matter what the Cubs score against him, he'll beat him 10 to 8 if he has to. 3 2 pitch. Swung on. High fly ball. Way back. Might be. Could be. And in. Holy cow. Wow, did he hit that ball. High into the center field corner of the left field bleacher. Listen to the crowd. Well, Harry, he took a 3-2 curve ball and hit it out of the ballpark and almost hit it completely out of the ballpark. Well, he doesn't know that Dwight Gooden has been that good against the Cubs. He just took a 3-2 pitch and hit it out of the park. So the Cubs already on the board. Here's Sandberg. Her ball a little bit low. Inside. Boy, that's a happy dugout, and you know that's a happy, happy toughy. And uh, you know the nickname Tuffy is given him by his mother. And that's why he likes to be called Tuffy. And he always likes to be remembered to his family. There he is. A looper, sharp right field on the run, base hit. Sandberg loops a single to right. And here is Mark Grace. Well, that's two curveballs and two base hits, and Gooden is not used to seeing his curveball get hit like that. Although Sandberg didn't hit it particularly hard, he hit it in a great spot. Jeff Kent couldn't get to it, he, neither could Jeremy Burnett. And we'll take a look at Tuffy Rhodes, a 3-2 curveball out over the plate, and Rhodes just puts a charge into it. Yeah, With the wind blowing out, no doubt about this, all Thompson does is look up. You know, that was to the curveball to the outside portion of the plate, and he hit it almost directly center field in the right, in the center field section of the left field bleachers, right where the two bleachers join. Here's Grace. fastball low and inside now this is from the rooftop camera the southwest rooftop camera and it's out over the plate away from him he gets his arms out and no doubt about that swing the last year Tuffy hit there goes a runner swung and fouled outside first base the hit run was on you know Rhodes last year started with uh, Omaha, a Kansas City Foreign Club, and he hit 23. Then he's traded to the Cubs, and he went over to Iowa, where he hit seven home runs, giving him a total of 30. Then he joined the Cubs, and long enough to hit three homers. So actually, he had a total of 33 home runs last year. Double play ball to Sharp. This guy, you know, over the second, over the first, and Grace has grounded into a double play. Six, four, three. And that brings up Derek May. 
Last year, Mark Race grounded into 20-some double plays, and this year they tried to hit and run. It was not successful, and Mark Race grounds into his first double play. Here's Derek Bain, one to nothing in favor of the Cup. Curveball in there, a strike call. And Doc Gooden has a fine number two going for him, even though one of them was hit for a home run. Way outside. One ball, one strike. Last year was not the typical Gooden year as he really struggled. He went just 12 and 15 in ERA, 345, and completed seven of his 29 starts. There's a smash, line drive. On one hop, right to good, who throws Derek May out to retire on the side. One run, two hits, no errors, one left. At the end of one, Cubs lead one to nothing. Now, oh, in the top of the second, David Segui, the first baseman of the uh, Mets, leading it off. His dad was a major league pitcher. There's a hot smash on the ground. Great play by Sam. Out at first base. Holy cow, what a tremendous play. Ryan Sandberg takes a base hit away from David Segui. From the scoreboard camera, we'll take a look at some good range to his right as Segui bidding for a base hit in his first at bat in the National League. Finds out what so many other National Leagues have found out, and that is that Ryan Sandberg is as good as it gets at second base. And he doesn't seem to have lost anything. There's a high fly ball. Who's going to grab it? Derek May is there. Two up, two down. Here's Ryan Thompson. One wish Mark Euler a happy birthday today. Around the Cub infield, Bouchel at third. Dunstan at short. Sandberg at second. Grace at first. There is no better defensive infield in the league. With a fine catch of Rick Wilkins behind the plate. By the way, speaking of Sean Dunson, who's just been an electrifying ball player all spring, he wanted to be sure to be mentioned to his youngsters, Whitney and Jasmine. Whitney and Jasmine Dunson, listening to the ball game back home in the Bay Area. By the way, this is Jasmine's fourth birthday. Bouncing ball, Dunson up. Watch his arm. In time, one, two, three. And Jasmine, your daddy just made another fine play. We go into the bottom of the second. One to nothing, Cubs. Watch good. Little bit. A little bit outside. Looks Boy, to me he, like he's around that play. It looks to me like Wilkins should look for something away from Doc Gooden. If he gets a fastball away, a lot like Tuffy Rhodes, he can take it out in left center. Curve high. Three and two. The White Sox at Toronto are tied 1-1 one, one at the end of three. Rhodes got the first home run there's a line drive hit hard but gonna be caught Jeremy Burnett's grab Wil Wilkins hot line drive two gone Bump Wills I think in 1982 let off a the season's opener with a home run in Montreal as I recall and now just Tuffy Rhodes has done it again in 94. Here's Michelle. One nothing Cubs. Fastball high. Pete Smith will go tomorrow. Pitch up in there a strike call. There's Mike Morgan to the left of Ryan Sandberg. Curveball in there. One ball, two strikes. The way goodness pitching. Morgan's going to have to be his best also. A tap on the ground. 
And Kent throws them out. One, two, three. At the end of two, the Cubs lead one to nothing. Blair as I live and breathe. The world's greatest ice skater. How do you navigate without ice skates on? Oh, I don't know. I try to do my best, but that's definitely where I feel most comfortable. <laughs> well, congratulations. What a great, great year you had, huh? Yeah, definitely. I don't think it could have gone any better, really. Um, it was last year was so-so, and I didn't know whether I'd have a good year this year, but boy, it was way better than I expected. <laughs> when are you going to skate next? Well, I'll have some time off right now, and then our dry land training won't start up again until about the end of May. Back on the ice in September, my first competition will be about the end of November, and then our world championships will be in Milwaukee in February. Well, listen, uh, congratulations to you. Nice to have you here. You can go back to your boyfriend now. <laughs> thank him for imposing, for us imposing on you. All right, thanks. Thank you, dear. Thanks, it's been nice. Bonnie Blair. What a sweet little gal she is. Dunson has thrown out a good hitting pitcher, Dwight Gooden, one away. And uh, there's another thing to remember your daddy by, uh, Jasmine, on your fourth birthday. His daughter, Jasmine Dunston, four years old today. And Sean, I think thinking more about the two youngsters back in the Bay Area than actually the opening game of the season. He's done this before. Here's a pitch swung on. There's a drive by Vizcaino. It's going to be out of here. It is! The former Cub really drilled one high in the right field. He circled the bases, and this game is all tied up. Vizcaino hit two home runs for the Cubs in spring training. And strangely enough, he gets a big hand from the crowd here. So Jose was a crowd favorite as a member of the Cubs. Nothing has changed now that he's a member of the Mets. And he ties up the game at one. It came from an unlikely source. But he's paying early dividends to his new employers, the New York Mets. He gets a fastball out over the plate and just drills it. Sammy Sosa looks up. But this one is against the back screen. And here is Todd Huntley who fanned in the first inning. This game all tied up. And the two leadoff men are responsible. Tuffy Rhodes led off the first with a home run off Doc Gooden. And uh, Jose Vizcaino with one out here in the third. There's another drive. Way back. It might be. It is Todd Huntley. It's another home run. Back to back homers. And the Mets lead two to one. He got that fastball to the inside part of the plate again. Well, last year, I thought the Cubs learned something about Todd Hundley, and that was to throw him a lot of off-speed pitches and a lot of breaking balls. Because last year, the only time they got him out was on slow curves and change-ups. Morgan went with the fastball, and of course, Hundley has always hit the Cubs very well because they've seemingly thrown him a lot of hittable fastballs, and he showed Mike Morgan that he could turn on one. So back-to-back -back home runs have given the Mets a two-to-one lead. Jeff Kemp, the second base with another home run threat. He hit 21. Bonilla hit 34. Reynolds was up there now. He hit 11 in the American League last year. And he was considered a home run hitter in the old Met lineup when he was with them the first time around. One ball, one strike. Got it. Inside. Two balls and the strike. Take a look one more time and watch the hands of young Todd Hunley. He gets a fastball. This one tailed back over the plate. Morgan wanted it inside and it didn't get there. Pitch fouled off. Two and two. Morgan throws a pretty good sinker. He usually, when he's right, he gets a lot of ground balls hit. In this inning, two got up in a win. There's a high pop fly. Going out for it, Mark Grace makes the catch. Two away. And here's Bobby Bonilla. Fan his first time up. 
Let's pause here for identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN-TV, Chicago. Now here's a guy you fear the long ball from. From Viscaino and Hunley really don't hit that many, but they sure did today. And that's the thing about baseball. They talk about statistics. What's happened has already happened. What's important is now. One ball, one strike. Good pitch over the outside corner. Now the last time that Morgan struck out Bonilla, he did it with a curveball in the dirt. And he's ahead of him one and two. Let's see if he goes back there one more time. Fastball inside, but Nia took it. Come on, Bob. And the count is even. Two to one in favor of the Mets. Check him out over the inside corner of fastball. So, two runs, two hits. No errors, nobody left. We go in the bottom of the third, two to one in favor of New York. Governor Edgar is with us. Uh, Governor, what were you saying to the First Lady, re a Republican governor talking to a Democratic First Lady? Well, we're both from Illinois, and we're talking about the Cubs. <laughs> it's well, a great day. It's great to have her here, and it's great to be here with you, Harry. In fact, I'm here to present you with a proclamation. I, as governor today, have proclaimed this Harry Carey Day well, in the state of Illinois. Well, thank you For very the 50 much. years of enjoyment you provided people all over the state. Uh, well, thank you. I appreciate that very much. And governor. we look forward to another 50 years. I'm, I'm in favor of that, uh, sir. Thank you very much. Again, just thank you and congratulations. I don't know many people are going to stay in the same job 50 years, but <laughs> that means you're awful good. I've been, a, I've been in the same rut for a long time, right? Well, you're in a pretty good rut. <laughs> thank so, you very much, Congratulations sir. and good luck with the Cubs this year. We need to do some work here. Thank you. we got to get some runs. That's right. right thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Leave this Leave it. 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 Pop fly, gonna be caught, hey! But he makes a catch. Boy, oh boy, Jeff Kent slipped. Just as he's gonna catch the ball, fell down, reached while on the ground and caught it. One away, good play. Well, last year this was a terrible defense for the Mets. This year they think they've made it a little bit better with the addition of David Segui. And Jeff Kent just shows you some acrobatics as he dives, rolls over, but still makes the play. So with the wind blowing out, you have to realize that everything that's hit down the line is going to blow back toward the field of play. Kent almost overran that ball. So there's one away. And here's Mike Morgan. Pretty good hitting pitcher himself. Two to one Mets. Uh, a hurried attack. Two swings, two runs. Foul ball outside first. 0 and 2. Well, let's see what Aflac has for us this year on the first game of the season. What is the Cubs' longest winning streak to start a season? My guess would have to be B. What's your? Okay, well, you guess B already. I'll say C. There's a pitch strike call. Mike Cook is here along with Dick Wilkins and Irv Siegel. They are the Chicagoland Indiana Buick dealers all at the home opener today. Well here's Tuffy Rose. He's been the whole attack. Cubs have only two hits. One of them a homer by Rose to start the ball game for the Cubs. Who now trail two to one. Tom Brennan will be along at the end of this half inning. Two men are out. Fastball outside. Rhodes did a total of 33 homers for three different clubs last year. Three of them in the major league. Well, let's see what the answer is. Hey, 
I'm finally right. Two balls, no strikes, two out. Pitch a little bit outside. Now Rhodes drew 11 bases on balls in spring training. He had over a 400 on base percentage, and that's what you look for from a leadoff hitter. There's a strike call. John Sender on hand here today. Three balls and the strike. Long drive, way back, it might be, it could be, it is. Holy cow. Tuffy Rose has hit two of them of Don Gooden. Listen to this crowd. Well, I guess you couldn't ask for a better leadoff hitter. It's a Ricky Henderson clone. And you know he worked the count to three balls and a strike again. This time he hit a 3 1 pitch. Well, this time instead of the curveball that he hit out of the park, he hit a fastball. Same result, a 2 2 game. And Tuffy Rhodes has thrilled this huge opening day crowd. Listen to the crowd. Boy, oh boy. And I mean, they both were hit well. <laughs> Smile, Tuffy, come on. <laughs> Here's a pitch of curveball. Boy, he's not showing the elation he must be feeling. Hot shot on the ground. Kemp has it. Over to first. One run. One hit. No air. Nobody left. Harry Carey from Rigby Field. We're at the end of three. The game is tied up. A battle of homers. Mets two. Cubs two. Four, a 2-2 game and that will change on one swing of the bat. Jeff Kent has played long ball. All five runs today have come via home runs. And New York all of a sudden is taking a 3-2 lead. That pitch was hammered. Tommy, anytime Mike Morgan gets the ball waist high or above, that sinker flattens out. And that ball goes a long way and we've seen it today. The big guy hasn't hit it. Bobby Bonilla, the man you think about hitting home runs, hasn't. Three other guys have. Well, it's nice to see you again, pal. And it's nice to see you, We too, wondered Tom. if you'd be back for uh, opening day with Steve Stone and our producer-director, Arnie Harris. I'm Tom Fredeman. Welcome to opening day 94, and it's been a very exciting game so far. We've had more runs today than we had in the first two games in the first uh, of last season. Well, just taking a look at Tuffy Rhodes hitting two home runs against none other than Doc Gooden has to thrill this overflow crowd. Carl Rhodes has said he feels a little pressure coming into this season, taking over the leadoff chore, the everyday center field job, but you wouldn't know it by today. Two at-bats, two home runs against perhaps a future Hall of Famer in Doc Gooden. David Segui, the batter, had a very fine year for Baltimore last season, but after they acquired Rafael Palmeiro, there was nowhere for Segui to play. And the Mets will take advantage of that. He's a pretty solid player, very good defensively. Well, he comes from good bloodlines. His father, Diego Sigui, a former pitcher, said that David didn't have the temperament to be a pitcher. He said if they made an error behind him, he would just blow up. So they decided to put him at first base. And here he is, a major leaguer. But and there is ball four to Sigui. So a leadoff home run by Kent. And now four straight out of the zone. And Dallas Green has a man aboard. Tommy, the Mets needed a first baseman. They had Eddie Murray. They decided to go in a different direction. This is a team that literally nobody picks to contend this year, so they felt that they had to get a little more youth on their ball club. Eddie Murray now with the Cleveland Indians, a team that's going to contend as we take a look at Tom Treblehorn looking out. And Tommy, I served notice what kind of a year it would be by immediately spilling your water as you came in all over your scorebook. I was getting ready to say, uh, you couldn't have dumped it all over your scorebook or your papers. It had to be all over mine. And that's ripped into right field down in the corner for Burnett. On his way to third is Segui. Burnett's going to second. Here comes a throw, not in time. So Morgan in deep, deep trouble to open the fourth inning. A home run by Kent, a walk to Segui, and now a double by Jeremy Burnett's. A lot of people on the New York Mets organization figured that certainly pitching would be a problem, but also 
how Burnett's and Thompson would hit at the bottom of the order. Now Jeremy Burnett's is very strong. And last year he showed that he could hit the ball out of the park. What he has to show is he can hit it a little more consistently and right there he rifles a double down the line. We'll take a look at Jeff Kent who hit 21 of them last year. He got that fastball. If you looked at the location it was high and away. He turned on it and with the wind blowing out at Wrigley Field. It was a long home run and so now meeting at the mound bullpen up and going plays Ilsley starting to get loose a left hander who has never pitched in the major leagues but he threw pretty well this spring and and he made it just ahead of left hander Dave Otto. Well Tom if you look at his numbers when he first started with Houston he was rated as their number one prospect in the organization he had staggering numbers in the minor leagues but that was before he hurt his arm. He has learned to be a completely different pitcher when the fastball got cut back about six eight miles an hour. So now with the Mets runners at second and third it'll be center fielder Ryan Thompson Dwight Gooden is on deck. Grace is even with the bag over at first and Bouchelle about a step behind it over at third and a good knockdown there by Wilkins to keep the runner David Segui at third base. If you're just tuning in first batter of the season for the Cubs Carl Rhodes. A home run to left center then in the third inning Vizcaino and Hundley they're not supposed to do that just based on principle those two guys they went back to back for home runs Rhodes another long ball to tie it and Ken a lead off home run here in the inning and now the Mets will take the lead even bigger down the line Segui coming in Burnett's will score may have in trouble down in the corner and going in with a two run double is Ryan Thompson and the Mets have now extended their lead to three. Well now the entire trade that sent David Cohn to Toronto a couple of years back and yielded Jeff Kent and Ryan Thompson has come back to haunt the Cubs both Kent and Thompson with extra base hits. That's a couple of RBIs for Ryan Thompson and hitting in the eighth spot. It looks like he's going to be a force to be reckoned with this year as the Mets have taken a three run lead. White Gooden a very good hitter the Cubs however figuring he's trying to get the runner down to third with a butt race way in over at first they let him at least swing away but he looks at a pitch down low. So the Mets in front five to two here in the top of the fourth inning. One to no to Gooden. And again Grace in on the grass at first. Gooden showing no sign of laying down a bunt. He looks at a strike. Well, Gooden one of the best hitting pitchers in the National League. You'd probably rank him along with Oral Hershiser. A couple of other fellas in that. Greg Maddox another guy who can hit but. Like Gooden likes to do his own hitting doesn't mean that. Dallas Green is not going to give him the bunt as you look at Bobby Wine to his right. His aide de camp in the dugout. And this time Gooden will bunt and it's a beauty. Morgan's only play is to Sandberg covering at first down to third goes Ryan Thompson. So Doc Gooden not only a great pitcher but a complete player as you mentioned he swings the bat he's a very good bunter he runs exceptionally well. And when you do that you're going to help yourself in the wind department. And now I have some new water thank goodness. And a dry book on top of it all. No that's not dry. semi dry book. Semi maybe. <laughs> Thank you again. All right, a runner at third. And here's Vizcaino. He's been aboard twice. He homered to right field back in the third inning and looks at a strike against a drawn in infield. And you figure three runs down with only one out, you draw in the infield, they cut off the man at the plate, and hopefully. In this situation you'll have the ball on the ground as Morgan has had trouble keeping the ball down. He needs a ground ball in this situation. Pitch on the way and it missed outside one and one to Vizcaino. Well Jose asked us to send out the best to his wife. They're about to have a. Little baby here in the next few days in fact she's going to stay right here in Chicago to have the child before going to New York. And this will get a run in. Maybe Derek May setting himself here comes Thompson here comes a throw not nearly in time and the Mets have extended the lead to 6 3 and Vizcaino the former Cub has come back to haunt him today he's already knocked in a pair.
Morgan trying to get the ground ball. Instead, Vizcaino gets the job done. Now, Ryan Thompson is not a base-stealing threat, but he does have very good speed, and he easily beats the throw from Derek May. So the Mets have a four-run lead. And this has usually been the case when Dwight Gooden goes to the mound. When the Cubs do hit Gooden, the Mets seem to score a lot more. That's the reason for the 26-4 and four lifetime mm. record that Gooden sports against the Cubs. 26-4. and four. Those numbers are almost too hard to believe. And an ERA of 316, so he's getting a few people out in the process. Yes. One and, and one to Hundley. Strange story about Todd Hundley. Kelly Stinnett beat him out in spring training. But here against the Cubs, Hundley starts because of his great success. Not only against the Cubs, but personally against Mike Morgan. He came in hitting over 400 against him. And it looks like a pretty good move so far. Hundley with a home run down the right field line against Morgan back in the third inning. But you brought it up. Kelly Stinnett in the Rule 5 draft coming over from Cleveland looks to be the everyday catcher. That'll end the inning. But a big one for New York. Four runs, three hits. Nobody left. We're in the middle of the fourth inning. Opening day, Wrigley Field, Chicago, and a four-run Mets advantage. The beautiful shot high above Wrigley Field. And that's the shot it's getting right now. It's also exceptional at plays at the plate, as well as looking where a guy hits the ball and how far out front he does get it. Nice of the folks to Southwest Airlines to bring us that camera shot all season long. And the Cubs need a little help offensively against Doc Gooden. It'll be Grace, Derek May, and Sammy Sosa. A 6-2 New York lead, and there's a base hit for Grace into right field, his first of the afternoon. And the fourth against Gooden. Two of the four home runs by Carl Rhodes. You know, I'm having a tough time calling him Carl. I used to grow up playing basketball against him, and I've always known him as Carl, but his mother calls him Tuffy. He likes being called Tuffy, so that's the way I guess it'll have to be. You have to call him Tuffy because the way he hit those first two balls, I wouldn't want to see him pounding any knots on your coconut. Thank you very much. I wouldn't either. <laughs> he keeps hitting home runs. We'll call him whatever he <laughs> wants to be called. That's a foul ball by Derek May. Derek May did not have many swings in spring training, and I talked to Tom Treblehorn about that fact and they said that while he wasn't able to run he still was swinging the bat in the batting cage so they don't feel that it's going to affect him at all he had some good swings late but he had very few game opportunities to swing the bat Tom Treblehorn of course his managerial debut at least in the regular season here today did a fine job in Milwaukee finished very strong his last year there going 40 and 19 over the last 59 games but the club did not make postseason, and they figured they needed a change. Been on the staff here ever since, and now takes over, and I think has won over many of the players who were a little skeptical after the firing of Jim LaFever. There's a drive in the center. Thompson keeps going back, and it's off the wall. Grace being waved around third. Here comes a throw home, and it's cut off. Now they have May caught. And a throw to Vizcaino, and they'll get him there. But the run does score. Give May the RBI two-base hit. And that makes it a 6-3 ball game with New York in front. Well, it goes as a first RBI for Derek May, and he turns around Ryan Thompson. You don't like to see base running like this because if you stay at second base, there's nobody out in the inning, and you've got a shot to get to Dwight Gooden. Now Mark Grace is going to score and I'm not sure what was on the mind of Derek May who is not running particularly well but being hung out to dry here the play is easy and Derek is out that could turn out to be a pretty big run. However the Cubs do get one and they now trail by three. One down base is empty and Sammy Sosa a big cut and a foul ball back. Gooden got him looking on strikes back in the second inning. The wind is blowing out. And generally, six runs does not win a game in the friendly confines with those kind of conditions. Generally. The one thing you try to do, if you can, is get into that bullpen because that was the sore spot for the Mets all of last year. And although they say John Franco is entirely healthy, that still remains to be seen. 
Here's the 0-2 to Sosa. And a little tardy on the good and fast ball. It's out of play. Well, they really haven't done a whole lot to shore up that bullpen. They needed some help in middle relief. What they did was bring in Pete Smith in the starting rotation. That's going to help them. And you see the winning percentages of the Mets as the ERAs have started to climb. The winning percentages have started to descend. That's no real surprise. Pretty much goes hand in hand. Yeah. You follow this game long enough. If the ERA is climbing, the losses are dwindling. Well, the Mets also didn't score very much last year. They had some big offensive problems. They lost 103 games. Two and two now to Sosa. No problem with their offense here today against Mike Morgan. Six runs and a 6-3 lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. We invite you to be with us all summer long here on Channel 9 for Cubs baseball. It should be a fun summer. Cubs figure to score lots of runs. And Sosa's out on strikes for the second time today. Third strikeout for Dwight Gooden. You agree about the point I made with Tom Treblehorn? I know a lot of the players were in favor of Jimmy Lefebvre and bringing him back, but I think Treblehorn has won many of them over with the kind of camp he ran in Arizona. Well, I think he ran an outstanding camp, and I think they took a look at the dedication of which Tom Treblehorn approached this spring and realized that he was trying to make them a better team. I think they liked the more offensive game that Tom Treblehorn played in the spring. The Cubs ran a lot more. They tried to do a lot more in execution. They bunted a lot more. I think they spent a lot more time on fundamentals this spring, and you're right. I think this team enjoys having Treble Hornet to hell. Weak roller to short. This kind of weighted backhands, and did he have enough? No, the ball is dropped by Sagi. Short hop throw over there, and Sagi generally very good with a glove, but that was a tough one to handle. This kind of may have weighted one bounce too many. Well, I think they're going to give Wilkins a hit on this. This is a pretty tough play. It comes off with a lot of spin, and Jose is caught in between. No, they're going to give him an air. And that's kind of surprising. It's a bang-bang play at first. If Sagi picks it clean, he probably has him by a half step. And as it turned out, it looks like they gave him an air, but they put a hit up on the board. So, Well, we're waiting to find out. I thought it should have been ruled an air, because if Sagi handles a throw, of course, they would give the throwing air to Vizcaino because it's in the dirt. But if he picks it up, Wilkins would have been out. Well, nevertheless, we can debate that, and I'm sure we will all summer long with our good <laughs> friend Bob Rosenberg. The official score here at Wrigley Field. And it is an air. We understand a throwing air has been charged to Jose Vizcaino. Bouchelle grounded out to second base his first time up. And we're starting to get a little closer to Mike Morgan's spot in the order. With only one man out. And Blaze Ilsley is again throwing down in the Cub bullpen. Well, you can understand that. Number one early in the season. Number two, you don't get many shots at Dwight Gooden. If this inning is still alive, when you get down to Morgan's spot, you certainly want to bring somebody off the bench. And there's a bouncing ball that will sneak through into left field. A base hit for Bouchelle. So with two down, the Cubs have two on, and Sean Dunstan is coming up. We see how damaging the base running mistake by Derek May turned out to be. The Cubs could have at least had four at this point, and a big inning still in place. As it is, there's a couple of outs. As we go back and take a look at Jose Vizcaino, the one thing that Jose doesn't have is a whole lot of range at shortstop. He's very sure-handed. He's got a good, strong arm. But he didn't have the range of either Dunstan or Sanchez at short. Now when they talked about Anthony Young and a lot of other teams wanted Anthony Young. I am certain that there was a choice given to Joe McIlvain as far as who he wanted. He thought that the most complete player and by the choice I'm talking about Hernandez Sanchez or Vizcaino. Mm -hmm. I think he felt the most complete player for his team was Vizcaino and that's who he wanted. I agree with him. Two on, two out. Cubs are down 6-3 against Doc Gooden, the Mets, here at opening day, 94. Dunstan, the batter, he popped a second his only time up. He looks at a strike. Dunstan had a spectacular spring. Eddie Zambrano in the on-deck circle, so they will indeed take down Mike Morgan if Sean Dunstan can keep it alive. 
Zambrano earning an opening day roster spot with a very sp fine spring. And, of course, he was the American Association's most valuable player one year ago. Good man to have coming off the bench with that bat. The 0-1 to Dunstan. High drive. Deep left center field. But it might not be enough. And it's off the wall. One run scores. Bouchelle will score. And the Cubs have trimmed it down to one. It looked like a ball that should have been caught. Well, take a look at Kevin McReynolds as he goes back to what will eventually be the Ivy. This is a towering fly ball to left center. That's home run alley here at Wrigley Field with the wind blowing out. McReynolds goes back, does not play this ball very well. He's very shy of that wall, and that ball hit the bottom of the fence. In that case, for all you young outfielders, get back to the wall and feel for it right away. Get to know where you are in relationship to the wall. Then he would have made the catch easily. As it was, two steps from the wall, he pulled up, and that ball hit at the bottom of the wall, not off the wall. So the Cubs get a break, and they close the gap to one. One throwing error in the inning by Vizcaino. And although that is ruled a double, certainly not a good defensive play by McReynolds. Here's Zambrano batting for Morgan. Pitch on the way. The tying run at second base, and it's strike one. Last year, the Mets were just a horrible defensive club, and they thought they did something to shore up the defense by putting Segui at first base. But they still have some guys playing out of position, and anytime you do that, and I'm talking about Bonilla at third, you've got some problems. And McReynolds is proving not to be exactly a gazelle in left. Foul ball straight back, and it's quickly 0 and 2 to young Eddie Zambrano. But McReynolds is not out of position. No, he is a left fielder. But he's, I think, slowed down a little bit as the years have gone. If you remember, Tommy, he sat out the first year of organized ball with a leg problem. And although he hasn't had recurrence of that, I don't think he runs as well as he did when he came up. Dunstan the tying run at second base. Two away. And Zambrano looks at ball one. One ball and two strikes. We're in the bottom of the fourth. New York getting four in the top of the inning. And Gooden with a little help defensively serving up three thus far here in the bottom of the inning. Two and two. You gotta wonder what's going through the mind of Eddie Zambrano facing a guy like Dwight Gooden. He's probably watched him pitch on TV countless times. I just think he's looking for something out over the plate because he knows the wind is blowing out today. And this is a hitter's paradise on days when the wind is blowing out. 2-2 two, two pitch. And he struck him out with a high heat. And that'll end the inning. Cubs get three runs, four hits, an error, and one left. We head to the fifth at Wrigley Field. It is a one-run New York lead. Back at, Rig back at Wrigley Field, Chicago, it's opening day, 1994. Of course, the season officially starting last night. Cub fans in Jacksonville, Florida, I'm sure their hero is Rick Wilkins. He has a new battery mate. It's left-hander Blaze Ilsley. Ilsley came out of the Houston organization. He came out with a blazing fastball, but after he hurt his arm, he had to learn how to pitch. And he usually gets the ball over the plate. That's his strong point. When you look at what he did at Iowa last year at 12 and 7. And you look at spring training. And it's that spring training that earned him a spot on the ball club. And now he comes in looking at a one-run deficit. And against Dwight Gooden hoping to keep that deficit right there. He has gone 3-0 and on Kevin McReynolds with Bobby Bonilla. Due up next. And there is a strike. We mentioned that Ilsley has never pitched an inning in the major leagues. He's bounced around a little. 29-year-old left-hander. Born and raised in Michigan. And there's ball four to McReynolds. You don't like having Bobby Bonilla in this ballpark coming up, period. Much less with men on base. Well, the one thing it does set up if Ilsley can throw the ground ball as it sets up the double play because McReynolds doesn't run particularly well, although he does go hard into second base. And Bonilla certainly does not run all that well. So Ilsley looking for the ground ball, preferably to the middle of the diamond. And let's see if he can get it. 
Bonilla 0 for 2. He has struck out twice. One swinging, second time looking. And for the first time today, he turns around to bat right-handed. Not a good opening day start for Mike Morgan. Four innings, six hits, six runs all earned. He walked a couple while fanning four. One and one to Bonilla. Bonilla shook off a few of the critics last season with the 34 home runs. He 87 batted in and he missed a grand total of about 30 games due to a couple of different injuries. Rib cage strain and a very bad shoulder. That one foul down the right field line. Well he's still suffering from some rib cage problems and that has stopped him a little but the way he's swinging the bat today it looks like the rib cage isn't bothering him all that much. It's not that I'm not looking for the two strikeouts but I mean I'm looking at his swing and he doesn't seem to be favoring either side. He's taking some pretty good hard cuts. So from the left field camera we pan in give you a good look at what Wrigley Field looks like on opening day with the bunting. High pop fly. Ilsley with a good pitch there to get in on Bonilla. Rhodes coming in and that's out number one here in the New York fifth. Mets are leading 6-5. A long way to go with a wind blowing out here in the friendly confines. Of course, one big story in baseball last night, well, you all know about the uh, official opening game with St. Louis downing Cincinnati, but uh, many in baseball eyeing the problems of Daryl Strawberry didn't show up yesterday for the Dodgers exhibition game against the Angels. They finally got a hold of him late last night. Runner goes, and Wilkins will have no throw to second base. What do you think happened there? Well, I think that one we have to chalk up to Blaze Ilsley. He really didn't pay much attention. Then he floated that change up outside and really gave Wilkins no chance. And unfortunately, this was a hit and run. And Kent, with a pitch about two feet outside, just decided not to swing at it. So McReynolds, the first stolen base for him this season. And Kent, a high fly ball in the left center. Wind will get a hold of this. How far? Rhodes at the wall. It's off the ivy. McReynolds had to wait. He'll go to third and stop there. Into second with a double is Kent. So the wind creating lots of problems for outfielders today. And Rhodes that time looked like he had a read on it. And then it blew right over his head. The wind is blowing out rather briskly. And Tuffy Rhodes goes across. Really has some problems with it. And Rhodes doesn't have a whole lot of games under his belt in center field here. Especially with the wind blowing out. Now he did play some games in September here Tommy but at that time of year more times than not the wind blew in. Mm -hmm. So this is a brand new experience for him and it's going to be an adjustment to play center field one of the tougher center fields to play with the wind like it is. Kent two out of three he homered back in the fourth inning now a double and here's Segui. Sandberg robbed him of a hit back in the second he walked and scored in the four run fourth inning. The Mets were looking at J.T. Snow. That was supposed to be the deal. Anthony Young for J.T. Snow. And eventually that deal fell through. And surprisingly when I talked to some of the guys associated with the Mets. They couldn't believe that J.T. Snow didn't stick with the Angels. They sent him down to the minor leagues. But when that deal fell through. The Vizcaino deal came along. And Anthony Young is now a Cub. And by the way through four very strong innings yesterday in Minnesota. Whoa, did he ever. But I don't have to tell you because you were there in person. Indeedy calling it on the radio side. I still can't figure out why we didn't televise that game. You should have been working. There's a breaking ball down low two and one. But then again there are many days through the course of a regular season where you should be working when actually you're not. Not many anymore. They have cut those down to a scant few. Well. Giving Arnie and I a chance of course to go to the library. I like that idea. Two on, and there's a sharp grounder. Dunstan going to come to third, and they will get the runner there. But McReynolds will score from third, making it New York seven and the Cubs five. Gives Segui the RBI on the fielder's choice ground ball. This ball hit very hard, and a good heads-up play by Sean Dunstan. And rule of thumb for a base runner, if the ball is hit to your right, there's no reason at all to go. Now watch it again. 
the run's going to score no doubt about that and I don't know what in the world Jeff Kent was thinking about but he should have stayed at second base forced Dunstan to make the long throw to first in which case you still had a man in scoring position so we've seen a couple of suspect base running plays today but the Cubs concede the run and fall two down runner at first two men out we're in the top of the fifth inning Mets in front seven to five and here's Jeremy Burnett he is fly to left doubled down the right field line and scored in the four run New York fourth inning. It's opening day 94. Huge crowd and the oh boy weather could not have been more cooperative. Last few opening days Tony we've had here at Wrigley Field have not been pleasant. Well stick around for tomorrow Tommy boy and you will see it. Oh not yeah. Be too pleasant. Rain on the parade at least for today. But today it's beautiful. What a nice day. See what I mean? A guy like you, and, and I figured by this time uh, this year you would have you know, come around a little oh, bit. I'm a ball of sunshine today. This is a beautiful day. Yeah, I know, but you're already looking ahead of tomorrow and, and the disastrous conditions <laughs> they are forecasting. 2-0 to count. Just wear that pilot's hat that you have for the rain, the one with <laughs> the flaps over each ear that I see you wear occasionally. Right. That's a good look on you. A lot of guys can't wear that. No, they can't. And not many guys want to. <laughs> Three and zero on Burnett's. You got to be careful here because Burnett's might just get the go ahead. He is one strong young man. And he takes ball four. Illsley's second walk in the inning. Two on with two men out, and here comes Ryan Thompson. And that'll warrant a visit by pitching coach Mo Drabowski. Hey, while we have a minute. Later tonight on WGN, it's a heartwarming story of the unbreakable bond that develops in friendship. We know about that, Stoney. Meryl yes, Streep and Jack Nicholson star in Ironweed tonight at 1130 on WGN Channel 9. There you go. Ironweed. A fine film. And we take a look at Mo Drabowski making now his second trip to the mound. And Dallas Green looking on. Dallas has his work cut out for him. He's taken an organization that really has fallen on hard times. They lost 103 games last year. Dallas took it over in the middle of the season. Felt that he wasn't going to put up with a lack of hustle. Along with Joe McElvain, they cleaned house, Tommy. 13 new faces on this New York Mets ball club. Ryan Thompson looks at a strike with two on and two men out. And I think they've done a good job. I mean, they'll be the first to tell you they have a long way to go. But when you walk in that New York clubhouse right now, as opposed to early one season ago, you, you just don't have the tension or the, I'm not sure exactly what the word is, but there's a lot of youth on this ball club and, and they genuinely seem excited about playing. Well, it came out of New York that I think either Dallas Green or Joe McElvain said they're probably gonna lose $20 million this year and have a tough season. Ball knocked down by Bouchelle, but a good play there. It prevented the man from scoring from second base. It'll go as an infield hit. But put a star next to that play if Blaze Ilsley can retire Dwight Gooden. Well, Steve Bouchelle had the best fielding record of any third baseman in the National League last year. And odds are he will do it again. He's got exceptional hands, and he saves a run. Knocks his ball down. There's nothing he can do with it. But he makes sure as Bill Hahn motions fair all the way that the inning continues and you can't take Dwight Gooden for granted. He is one fine hitter. Base is loaded for the doctor and he looks at ball one down and away. Gooden laid down a perfect bunt leading to a run in the fourth inning. And he can really swing the bat. Sagi at third, Burnett's at second, Thompson at first. And now it's 2-0 and oh on Gooden. And this is not the kind of guy, Stoney, you just brought it up. You fall behind to Doc Gooden. It's not like falling behind 2-0 to just your average hitting pitcher. Well, especially when you don't have that overpowering fastball. And that's something Blaze Ilsley has to live on his control. And today, I think he's got to be a little nervous out there. Gooden took a big hack there and fouled it off. You know, you figure, Tom, he spent so long getting to the major leagues. It looked like he was going to be a star when he came up. Had the arm injury with Houston battled his way back at the fine year last year in the Cubs organization here he is in the major leagues it's got to be an emotional appearance for him and there's a base hit in the right field for Gooden Sagi scores now they wave around Burnett's here's a throw way offline and Doc Gooden with a bases loaded two run single has added to this New York lead 
It now goes to nine to five in favor of the Mets. Take another look at a fastball up when you fall behind and Tommy was talking about even falling behind to a pitcher. In this case Doc Gooden is not your typical hitting pitcher. This throw is well off the mark and Burnett scores under the tag. The Mets have come back after the Cubs came back in the bottom half of their inning and there's Sean Bosky getting loose. Runners on the corners in the batter now Jose Vizcaino and Bosky getting ready in a hurry. Vizcaino one for one hit a solo home run in the third he walked in the first had a sack fly RBI in the fourth and he'll turn around to bat right handed and swings and misses. There was some talk of Brett Saberhagen being traded but after the addition of Jose Vizcaino both Joe McIlvain and Dallas Green thought their team started to look a little more competitive and now they figure that they're probably going to keep around Saberhagen and they like their one two three of Gooden Saberhagen and Pete Smith. And if you're wondering why Saberhagen is not pitching in this series he is still serving a five game suspension handed down a year ago. But the Cubs will get a look at him they're holding him back to the home opener. A week from today when the Cubs visit Shea Stadium in New York. And that's the inning. But a big inning against Dilsley. New York coming up with three runs. Three hits. Two men left middle of the fifth in Chicago Cubs are down by four in luxury seating at the greatest ballpark in all of baseball right here Wrigley Field you can rent a Cubs mezzanine skybox each box includes 15 tickets to parking passes plenty of dates are still available 312 404 4155 and reserve your skybox date today 9 5 New York in front we go to the bottom of the fifth this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago National League Ball Club which has a right of approval of the announcers and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago National League Ball Club is prohibited. Well, here's been the man of the day for the Cubs. Tuffy Rhodes, two at bats, two home runs to left center field, and that time Doc Gooden comes high and tight. Well, you pretty much had to expect that. He hit a curveball and a fastball, and Doc is running out of pitches and places to throw Tuffy. So he figured one up and in might be just what the doctor ordered. And there's the drive. Way back. Oh my goodness. Road three home runs. Can you believe it? Paul Rhodes, three at bats, three home runs against White Good. In this his opening day start. Well, the fans giving him a standing ovation. Soon we will hear from Sharon Panazzo. And the last time anyone on opening day has hit three home runs. And there's the curtain call. And he deserves a curtain call. And a little salam from his teammates. And not a cheap one in the bunch, Tommy. He's hit all three of those right on the button. And all three of those to left center field. Well, finally we get a smile out of Tuffy Rhodes. It took the it took a hat trick to do it, but he did it. And now Rhodes finally, Stoney mentioned cracking that smile. I mean, what a day! He said he felt a little pressure coming in and taking over as the center fielder, leadoff man, and he's facing a future Hall of Famer, and he has three home runs. Well, I don't know how long this leadoff man stuff is going to go, but you don't want your leadoff hitter to hit three solo shots as we take another look. After the knockdown pitch, Gooden gets a fastball low and away. So he got a curveball out over the plate. He got a fastball up and away. Now a fastball low and away, and the same result on all three. Three solo home runs. And it's a nine to six game as this has turned into a wild one at Wrigley Field. Well, folks. We didn't promise you great pitching this year. We promised you a lot of excitement. And that's what's going to happen with this team. I mean, you know, the thing you got to remember about Carl Rhodes, up until last year when he combined with three different teams to hit a grand total of 33 home runs. Here's a guy who had never hit more than four home runs in an entire minor league season. Well, Tommy, we did the same thing in the offseason. Tuffy and I really bulked up on the weights. <laughs> 
And that's why he hit home runs last year. That's why my golf swing was a little bit better. Hey, and that's why my back blew out. Do me a favor. <laughs> don't compare your physical stature right now being rather broken down with the way this guy's. He's putting on the wrong hat. Somebody must have thrown his hat. Hey, he's, he's just excited. He's going to put on any hat. Well, the kid who comes from the city where baseball professionally started, Cincinnati, Ohio, looks like he invented the game here today. Billy Williams is talking to him. Billy said, that's the way I used to do it, Tuffy. Back when it was tough to hit. Not and like today with the lively ball. Right. Carl Tuffy Rhodes. Well, the one thing you really hate to see is what's going on right now is a disruption of this game. The Cubs look like they're going to come back in this one. And although you don't mind Dwight standing on the mound a little bit longer than he should, I'd like to see him get cleaned up and get this game underway. And unfortunately, many of the fans are still throwing either hats or some kind of debris out on the field. And yes, the number of home runs for Tuffy Rhodes today. Don't throw that. Well, you take a look at the man of the hour as far as the Cubs are concerned. And if you're trying to break in as a leadoff hitter, I couldn't think of a better way to break in than what Tuffy Rhodes has done here today. He's going to leave an indelible impression on not only one Doc Gooden, but the entire National League when they read about what he did this afternoon. Well, they're finally getting a lot of it cleaned up out here, and it'll still be a few minutes. The last Cub... Well, let's see if we can uh, beat Sharon Panazzo to the punch here. You'll find the last cup to hit three home runs, but will you be able to find the last cup to hit three home runs on opening day? Oh, well, they don't give us that information. A three-homer game was Andre Dawson. You have to go all the way back to 1987 when he did it against Philadelphia on August the 1st. That, of course, the year Andre Dawson won the National League's Most Valuable Player Award. So just 87 for three home runs in a game. And as Stoney mentioned, forget about opening day. I, I don't know where you find that. I don't know if there's another guy that's hit three home runs off Dwight Gooden in his entire career. And that spans, spans while well, going on the 11th year, I believe. Mm -hmm. Dwight Gooden, this is his 11th year in the major leagues. And I got to believe you can look long and hard and not find another game where he gave up three to the same man. Oh, I agree with you. This guy's only 154 wins, 81 losses in his career in an ERA of uh, just over three. All right. It is a 9-6 ball game. And we're only in the bottom of the fifth. Sandberg, one of two. And he's down a ball and two strikes to Dwight Gooden. Arnie Harris going out on the line, making one of his fearless predictions here in the fifth inning saying that nine runs will not win this game. Yeah. Well, Arnie really goes out on a limb on a regular basis. Sandberg drives one to right center. This ball will split the gap and go cut off by Burnett. And here comes the throw. He has a good arm, but Sandberg able to get in there with a double. Well, Mike Morgan had some problems today, and Dwight Gooden is starting to take his lumps. He gets the fastball out over the plate. This is a pretty good play by Jeremy Burnett as he cuts this ball off, but he gets entangled with Thompson. And Sandberg, a good heads-up base runner, sees this in front of him, realizing that Burnett has got to extricate himself from Thompson before he can get the throw off. And you're right about one thing, Tommy. Burnett has one of the better arms in right field. But no chance to get Sandberg there as still nobody out and Grace has got to pull the ball here. Grace does pull it down on one knee. Segui will go to the bag himself but Sandberg now with only one out advances down to third base. Good job by Grace. Now the bullpen up and working for the New York Mets. And we'll take a look. David Telgater saw him a few times last season brought up near the end of the year 
He was 6-2 and two with the Mets last year, but a high ERA of 476. So he did pitch at the right time. On the ground, it'll bring in another run. Kent will throw out Derek May. And that makes it a 9-7 ball game. So the Cubs have gotten two of them back. Derek May with a couple of runs batted in today, and Dallas Green electing to keep the infield back. Now Dallas Green knows this ballpark as well as anybody, and he figures in the fifth inning, there's no reason to allow the Cubs to have any bigger inning than they're going to have, so he concedes the run for the out and knows that it's still relatively early in this game, just about halfway through. Very moderate temperatures here at Wrigley Field today, a little better than 50 degrees. Oh, but the scoreboard is being lit up by both ball clubs here today. It is nine to seven, bottom of the fifth. Kind of surprised, Tom, that Dwight Gooden has been able to throw his fastball by Sosa. Now he throws him with a curveball once, but about three or four times he's just thrown the fastball right by him. And he does right there again, and I mean right down the middle of the plate. That's kind of surprising because last year when Sammy had it tuned up, there weren't too many people that could get that fastball by him. Well, who's ahead right now? The, the hitters, the pitchers uh, with a full spring training? Uh, the hitters today, I mean, with the winds blowing out, that certainly helped. Normally, early in the season, you will see the pitchers a little more dominating. But, of course, today, you can throw that out the window. Soso will be retired for the third time. He bounces back to Gooden. Two runs in the inning, couple of base hits. At the end of five, the teams have combined for 16 runs. New York in front by two. We head for the sixth inning. Let's step out for a station ID on the Cubs baseball network. This is America's number one sports station. WGN TV, Chicago. Steve Stone back at Wrigley Field, Chicago, opening day 1994. Gorgeous afternoon. And all the uh, studies suggest that fans love seeing runs scored. And already 16 of them here today. You know, Tom, it's funny. I kind of get a little impatient with people that talk about the beauty of the game of both football and basketball and how baseball is losing interest to a lot of fans against those two sports. Now, this is a, a sport that doesn't do anything to change the scoring of the game itself. In football, they're talking about the two-point conversion. They make a uh, ruling where you can't hit the uh, receiver after five yards. Basketball put in the 24-second clock. And the three-point shot. And the three-point shot, as well as widening the lane for the bigger players. So they do things artificially to change the game to encourage scoring. And they've done that back and forth. The, the rules have changed in the course of the game. But the actual rules of the game of baseball haven't changed. You score the same way. You can't hit a two-run homer with nobody on base. I mean, everything has stayed the same over these years, and still the game holds up, and still the people keep coming out. And also, another factor, it's still the only game in town where you can take the kids and see a game and get out without taking a mortgage on your house. You got that right. You can't do it in football, and you can't do it in basketball. Boy, very well put there, Professor Stone. I mean, you sum that up very quickly, concisely, precisely, everything. Here's a 2-1 to Hundley, and... Turns around about right-handed and can't get it. Two and two. Bullpen up and going for the Cubs in this hitting extravaganza. And with the wind blowing out, something you very rarely see on opening day, the hitters have taken advantage of it and have come out of spring training roaring. Hundley, one of three, hit a solo home run back in the third inning. And he thought about that. They appeal and nothing doing, says Bob Davidson. Tom Treblehorn visiting the mound briefly and one thing Treble Horn has talked about time and time again during spring training, he will not tolerate pitchers that do not throw strikes. Well, leadoff walk to McReynolds in the fifth, and he scored. That ball into shallow right center, and Sosa can't get it. Hundley, the turn at first, but he'll stop right there. Sosa nearly coming up with a diving stab. Todd Hundley hit 228 last year, but something happens when he sees a Cub uniform and the man who's throwing it. As Sammy sees this ball drop out of his glove, he kind of took the circuitous route to this sinking line drive. But Hundley, with a couple of hits today, and I don't care what he does against anybody else, he just kills the Cubs. McReynolds, a high fly ball down the left field line. Derek May waiting. 
And he has it for the first out here in the New York sixth inning. Mets are leading nine to seven. But a long, long game left. Well, a few other games from baseball. Montreal on the bottom of the sixth inning in front of Houston, three to one. Boy, I like that Expo team. John Smiley shutting out St. Louis through five, four nothing Reds in front. Run down some of the American League games later. The only final, the New York Yankees opening at home beat the Texas Rangers five to three. And you hold that Texas ball club to three runs, you're doing something right. And I believe Jimmy Key was the opening day starter for the Yanks. Well, the Yankees are going to do it with just about the entire left-hand starting rotation. They got Jimmy Key. They have Terry Mulholland, late of Philadelphia. They've got Jim Abbott. They've got Bob Ojeda trying to resurrect his career. So if the teams around baseball are looking for lefties, look to the Bronx. The Yankees have them. Yeah, the only right-hander is uh, Melito Perez. One on, one out. Bonilla's had a quiet day. He has struck out twice and fly to center. Jim Bullinger continues to loosen up in the bullpen. As Blaze Ilsley trying to get out of this one without any further damage. Touched for three last inning. Bonilla's hit more home runs and knocked in more runs against Cubs pitching than any other team in the National League. And I bet about three quarters of those 26 home runs have come right here in the friendly confines. Tommy, I just think back to that outstanding outfield at the Pittsburgh Pirates and notably Sid Thrift, who now works as the assistant general manager to Larry Himes, put together. And you see Barry Bonds in left and Andy Van Slyke in center and Bobby Bonilla in right. Ooh. And you realize what kind of damage that team was able to do. When you look at the numbers, those guys pile up and two thirds of them now with other clubs. And doing pretty well, I might add, particularly that guy out in uh, San Francisco. Yes, sir. Barry Bonds going for an unprecedented fourth MVP and but for two votes would have been going for a fifth in a row might I add yes please do add Terry Pendleton beat him out a lot of people felt that year that Barry deserved it although Pendleton had a magnificent season one and two to Bonilla on the ground off the mound and let's see Bouchelle will not have a play on Bonilla at first that'll be an infield single for Bobby Bonilla and the Mets have two on with one out. That was just a bad break. It looked like it caught the side of the mound just before Ilsley had a play. Well, it looks like it could have been two, but Ilsley can't get the glove down in time. It caroms off, I believe, his shoe. By the time Bouchel comes up with it, no play at first base. So a couple of men on, only one out, and a very dangerous Jeff Kent. And what Kent lacks in mobility at second he makes up in raw power hit 21 last year and probably will better that this year this is a pretty tough young hitter well he already has his first home run of the season today and there's a sharp single in the left they're going to wave the runner around here comes a throw by May cut off and now they have Bonilla caught Sandberg running him to third and Dunstan will put on the tag advancing on to second with an RBI as Jeff Kent and that makes it a 10-7 New York lead well, we have seen some bad, bad base running by both clubs here today. Let's take a look at a changeup by Ilsley that stays up, and Kent drives it in the left field. His second run batted in. Hunley is going to score, but visions of Vince Coleman by Bobby Bonilla as he rounds the bag. Once he gets hung up, though, good piece of base running because he allows Kent to go to second. On the rundown, the Cubs would have rather run Bonilla back to second and made sure that Kent stayed at first. It didn't work out that way, and now an intentional walk to Segui to face Jeremy Burnett. And the way that Jeff Kent is going right now, he's three out of four, has a homer, a double, a single, and he's batted in each of the last three innings. If that holds to form, he'll bat three more times in the game and have a triple to go for the cycle. And this game will also be 24 to 20. <laughs> As Bo Drabowski is going through his lineup trying to figure out 
how to stop the bleeding on this pitching staff. Tom Treblehorn talking about it. Now a little word with Chuck Cotier. And as we said, Tom, looking at the team in spring training, we knew that the offense was going to be high powered. And we figured that the pitching staff was going to give up some runs. And this is going to be not the exception, but the rule this year, I believe. Games like this, although with the wind blowing out, you're going to get more runs. But I think normally you're going to see high scoring games from the Cubs this year. Right now it's 10 7 Mets with two aboard and one man out here in the top of the sixth inning. Jeremy Burnett's with a count of 0 and 1. Ilsley turns it loose and he swung and fouled it back. Well, I have a feeling with all the commotion taking place in our booth right now that we are just moments away, perhaps, from visiting with the First Lady, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Maybe she'll be stopping by, I'm sure, sometime today. I don't know if she wants to talk to me. <laughs> Well, you never know. Well, I certainly wouldn't ask her about any of the policies today. There's a pitch down and in, and they check his swing. They say he went around. And that will end the inning. New York getting one run on three hits, leaving two. Head for the bottom of the six. Mets 10, Cubs 7. 10-7 ball game. New York in front. Doc Gooden to begin things against Rick Wilkins. He'll be followed by Steve Bouchelle and then Sean Dunstan. It's been a wild game. There have been a total of three half innings today where nary a run was scored. First two innings for New York against Mike Morgan. Bottom of the second inning for the Cubs against Doc Gooden. Crooked numbers the rest of the way. See the Cubs scoring in the first and New York in the third. And then right down the line, big, big numbers here in the middle innings. And that's a change of pace from our track record. Well, I would think, Tommy, that the one thing the Cubs would like to do is keep this inning alive to get Tuffy Rhodes one more shot at Dwight Gooden. Well, he would be due a fifth. The Cubs can get that far. Two and one on Wilkins. Who is lined will. to right and reached on an air. Nobody warming up in the bullpen, but Jim Bullinger, I'm sure, is ready to go if the Cubs do get at least one base runner this inning. Two and one to Wilkins. And that one came in on him. What kind of velocity you think Doc Goodness had here today, Stoney? That was a much debated topic a year ago about this time. I thought his velocity is good, but I don't think it's exceptional. I don't think he's going to reach back into those days of yesteryear and have those big strikeout years. So Wilkins beginning things in the right fashion against Gooden with a sharp single through the middle. I'm also a little surprised because he has thrown a lot of pitches so far and nobody is warming up in that bullpen. Now granted Dallas Green doesn't exactly have an all star pen down there but this is opening day. It is a beautiful opening day. It's not all that cold. You don't concern yourself with that, but you really hate to see your opening day pitcher go much over 105, 110 pitches. If they get to that point, you're really asking a lot of them. Here's Bouchel and a ground ball that will sneak through in the center field a hit. Wilkins will stay right there after the quick turn. So consecutive singles by the Cubs here off Gooden to begin the sixth. And Dunstan is coming up. And the horn is ringing with Steve Swisher, the former Cub, answering down in the New York bullpen. That's a former battery mate of mine, Steve Swisher. In fact, Steve Swisher came over in a trade along with me and Jim Kremel and Ken Frayling to the Chicago Cubs for your partner on the radio side, Ron Santo. The old third baseman. Back in 19, winter of 1973 preceding the 1974 season in a in a deal that was devastating for both teams <laughs> and I have to throw it in Swisher a graduate of Ohio University yes he was in the Shanometer, making an opening day appearance at a lofty 500 one for two and the one was a double to left center field that brought in two runs back in the fourth inning Wilkins at second Bouchelle over at first nobody out and the Cubs are only down by three here in the last of the six. And Glenn Allen Hill with a bat standing in the on deck circle ready to come on. And there's a look at one of the most powerful men in the National League. He can really launch him. Mm. 
See what Dunstan's doing here. The Mets are maybe thinking about a bunt. Well, that's why Gooden stepped off the mound as quickly as he did. Dunstan taking a long look down. And he wants to see if perhaps the bunt is in order. Tony Muser, the coach at third, going through his set of signs. Gooden getting the sign from Hundley. And now the pitch. And Dunstan did not show bunt that time. A nasty hook from Gooden in there for a strike. Tell Gator back up. Joined by left-hander Eric Kilman. Kilman, 6'10". Tall left-hander mm -hmm. Eric Kilman. Two on, nobody out. Dunstan drives one to center field. Thompson came back, brought in, went back again, and he makes a catch. Now here's a case where a good base runner takes one extra base. And I'm talking at second base and Rick Wilkins. As soon as he saw that Ryan Thompson went back on the ball and had to go back to make the catch, you tag up because Thompson can't get anything on the throw. Wilkins went halfway. Might not come into play, but we'll take a look and see what the resolution of the Glen Allen Hill at bat is. You can score a lot easier from third than you can from second. So Rick still standing at second with his buddy Bouchel over at first, and here is the aforementioned Glen Allen Hill. Came over to the Cubs, and boy, did he tear up National League pitching. Appearing in only 31 games, he had 10 home runs, including a game winner against New York Met left-hander John Franco. Here's ball one. Hill came up highly touted in the Toronto Blue Jays organization, put up some monster numbers. In 86, back in Knoxville, he hit 31 home runs and knocked in 96 runs. Things never worked out in Toronto, and from there to Cleveland, and here to the Cubs for Candy Maldonado. Did he go around? Yes, he did. It's one and one. Well, it used to be years ago, Tom, the San Francisco Giants were known as bringing the most power through to the major leagues. They didn't develop many pitchers, but... They stocked the National League with outfielders for many, many years. And of late, the talent that has come through the Toronto organization has been staggering. Not only Glenn Allen Hill, but Mark Witten, and they both came along at the same time. Hill was a better prospect of the two, but you look around and you see a lot of Toronto players, Jeff Kent and Ryan Thompson, just on this Mets team alone. So they've used a lot of their youngsters for trades and brought up some pretty good players to their major league team. There's a breaking ball strike. Glenn Allen Hill motioning. He didn't like that call by home plate umpire Jim Quick. He thought it was low. And he might be right. From the south southwest rooftop camera, we'll take a look at this breaking ball. No doubt it had the plate. Glenn Allen Hill thought it was down, but Jim Quick thought it was good enough. One out, two on, one and two to Hill, and Gooden comes back with a fastball. Hill has been going after a number of high fastballs here during the exhibition season. Struck out a couple of times in Minnesota Saturday, once yesterday, on high heat. Well, that's the game plan. If you're looking for a scouting report, you get ahead of Hill with the breaking ball and throw ahead high fastball and usually throw it by him. If Glenn Allen lays off that one, he's tough to get out. 2-2 pitch, and he fouls it away to stay alive against Dwight Gooden. I don't think anybody left has left quite yet. Not the way this one's being played. Yeah, it's been an exciting game. And the Cubs still have a few more chances at Doc Gooden and the bullpen. And that's what you want to do is get into that Met bullpen. Wilkins started the inning with a single. Went to second on a single to center by Bouchelle. Dunstan a pop fly into center. So two on, one out. And New York ahead here in the last of the sixth. 10-7. Glenn Allen Hill, the tying run. 
waiting on the pitch from Gooden and now he'll back out of the box. What do you think Gooden comes with here Stoney? One head high fastball and he tries to throw it right by him. But then again I never had Doc's fastball so but that's what I would go to. See if I could get perhaps an over anxious hill swinging at something out of the zone. Let's take a look. That's what he came with and it almost hit him. Glenn Allen Hill is most fortunate. He was not struck in the head with that good and tailing fastball. Well he went for the head high fastball and it got just a shade out in front of his head. We'll take another look at it as Glenn Allen Hill strides in and has this one just under the chin whiskers. Pretty good reflexes here by Glenn Allen and that one didn't miss by much. And that rooftop camera from Southwest Airlines shows you that it missed by nary a whisker. All right, now three and two. I come with a good solid curveball, and if it's a strike, Glenn Allen sits down. All right, let's see. Two aboard, one man out. It is a 10 7 Cub lead, and the crowd looking for something to happen. Go back to the top of the order with the man who is, well, you couldn't do any more than Tuffy Rhodes has done today. Three at bats, three hits, three home runs. He's a man waiting on deck. And don't believe for a second Doc Gooden doesn't know it. Well, I'm wondering if you go to Eric Hillman, if this inning is still around when Tuffy comes to bat, if the inning is still going, if Glenn Allen Hill does not ground into the double play. If I'm Dallas Green, I don't think I let the doc face him again. I don't three think of his, so. Three of his offerings are now souvenirs. And again, uh, the second baseman Kent coming over. And Bluff Wilkins back to the back. Gooden obviously really wants to make sure he's on the right page with what he wants to go with in this situation to Glenn Allen Hill. One out, two on. 3-2 to Hill. And he came with a fastball down, and Hill stays alive by fouling it off. I got to believe, and Tommy, we're not charting the pitches, but I know that Gooden's up over 100 pitches. Sure. And I would think right now that he is really starting to labor. Just looking at the fastball, and again, you can't really judge it from up here as velocity is concerned, but he doesn't have what he has on the fastball now is what he started the first couple innings with. He's probably down two, three miles an hour. Three and two to Glenn Allen Hill, and he got him swinging. That's a big out for Doc Gooden. Now let's see what Dallas Green will do. He's walking out of the dugout, and the crowd standing and cheering as there is no way Dallas Green will allow Doc Gooden to see Tuffy Rhodes again. Well, I can't blame him, and we figured that might be the case. As Dallas Green comes out, he's asking for Eric Hillman, the left-hander. And I don't blame him. Dallas is no dummy. All right, we'll have a break in the action. Hillman will take down Gooden. Cubs with two on, two out, trailing 10-7 here in the last of the six. Back right after this. 7 ball game Cubs batting with two on and two out here in the last of the six and with Tuffy Rhodes coming up Dallas Green goes to left hander Eric Hillman Eric Hillman at 6'10 225 pounds out of Gary Indiana makes his home now Virginia Beach last year at Norfolk he was six and two a fine 221 ERA came to the Mets the record turned around somewhat he was two and nine oh, he made 22 starts of his 27 appearances and a lot of people figure that Eric Hillman is going to be the number five starter. But with a number five starter probably two to two and a half weeks away in the Mets scheme of things, he's working out of the bullpen. And his first assignment is the man who's hit the ball out of the park all three times he's been to bat. And there is the man of the moment, Tuffy Rhodes. And listen to this ovation. See the numbers on Hillman in spring training. And indeed, what a way to start for Tuffy Rhodes. 
Graduated from the same high school as Don Zimmer, Jim Fry, Pete Rose, Eddie Brinkman. Three home runs today for Rhodes. Can he make it number four? There's ball one. Now, Hillman is not overpowering, and although you would think at 6'10", he would have Randy Johnson-type velocity, he doesn't. Rhodes waiting. Now the pitch, and it goes to 2-0. It's interesting they're staying away from him. He's hit three balls to the opposite field for home runs. And well, that's the direction the wind is blowing. Well, the one thing that Hillman knows is if he loses Rhodes, he's not going to face Sandberg. Two on, two down. Ball three. Interesting decision for Tom Treblehorn. Do you give your suddenly rejuvenated number one hitter the 3 0 go after you, hitting three home runs? Are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? This is Hammer City here if it's good. <laughs> if he hits one here, he can run for whatever office he wants in the state of Illinois. Rhodes waiting. Now the pitch. And he takes ball for the line. So the bases are loaded. And Dallas Green, more than likely, will walk the walk to the mound once again. Well, he's got the right-hander throwing in the bullpen. And I find it somewhat surprising that he's going to allow Hillman to face Ryan Sandberg. With a three-run lead, and there's Dave Tailgetter. Go figure this. Well, Dallas... If he hits one out, the papers are going to be full of who's the next manager in New York. <laughs> All right, here's Sandberg. He's had a good day. Two of three with a run scored. Bases loaded. And there's a strike at the belt from Hillman. Well, the pitcher spot is due up second in the New York seventh. But right now, the Mets are just trying to hang on to a lead. Cubs are down by three. Wilkins, Bouchelle, and Rhodes aboard. Two men out. The 0 1 to Sandberg. Lined in the left field, but right at McReynolds to end the inning. He hit it on the button. No runs, two hits. Three men left. Harry back in the seventh at the end of six. It's still a 10 7 New York lead. Thompson will lead it off. First pitch a little bit low. 10 to 7. The Cubs trailing by three. They had an opportunity with the bases loaded. And uh, Ryan Sandberg hit a hot shot, but right at the left fielder. There's a strike call. A ball and a strike. Thompson is two out of three. An exciting ball game. Now the pitch, here it is. A high pop fly. On the infield, backing out, Sandberg. Under it, he has it. One man out. The Cubs at least got rid of Doc Gooden. But boy, this goes to show you the, the kind of a pitcher he is against the Cubs. Even when you knock him out, he's still leading and has a chance to pick up the victory. That's really what happened, Harry, over the course of his career. He'd have his great games against the Cubs, but on days when they'd hit him like today, seven runs and 11 hits, his team just has a great offensive day also. And Bullinger had a great spring, and that's why he made this ball club. He didn't come with any promises, and he credits it to winter ball. He threw in Mexico and kept his arm in good shape and threw the ball well all spring. Here's Ursulak, who was the uh, doubled switch that Dallas Green made with uh, Eric Hillman coming in the pitch. Ursulak replaced Bernard's in right field. Veteran outfielder. Curve ball inside, the count evens up. Orselak is a good, solid utility player, a fine fourth outfielder, but before they got David Segui, it was speculated that Joe Orselak would have to fill in at first base, a position that he's not too comfortable with. But as a utility outfielder, he's a good bench player and a good hitter. Now the pitch to Orselak, a little bit inside. Well, we've already rehearsed this act, Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> We just are on radio for about an inning and a half. It was fun to do 
it was really fun, Harry. Thanks for doing that, and I was glad to see Ron. He was a player that I used to watch uh, when I was younger. Nice play by Sandberg, throws him out. Good. Ursula thrown out on a nice play by Sandberg. Well, you're going to, we have the first lady up here now, and she's been all over the place today. Threw out the first pitch. Put your, you got to put your hat on. Oh, got my hat here, too. I love my hat. That a girl. Yeah, I'm ready. And you're a native Chicagoan, aren't you? That's Park right. Ridge, is it? That's right. I was born here on the north side, and then uh, when I was about three and a half or so, my parents moved to Park Ridge, and that's where I lived uh, all the rest of my growing up years. How come you didn't go to Northwestern? Well, because I thought it was a great school, and I love Chicago, but I wanted to see another part of the country. And uh, But I love coming back here. So... Uh, there's a line drive, right field coming on. Oh, Sosa, the ball oh. gets through his leg. Rolling to the wall. On his way to third base, Vizcaino. And he'll make it easily. Vizcaino tripled through the legs of Sammy Sosa, who was trying for a shoestring catch. Take a look at Sammy Sosa, who's having some problems with the sinking line drives in right field. This one sinking in front of him. He doesn't block this ball. He allows it to get by him. And a little generous scoring, giving a three-base hit on what could have been a single and a two-base error. But nonetheless, Vizcaino is once again has bit the hand that fed him. And the crowd not happy with the scoring decision. Of the official score here today. Well, he, he tried for a sure string catch. And he just didn't make it. And frequently that happens. So they got a runner third, but two out. And here's Todd Hunley. He's had two hits today, including a home run. There's a curveball a little bit outside. Well, you know what you're going to have to do as soon as we get the third out, don't you? What's that, Harry? You're going to have to sing our... <laughs> the, uh, take me out to the ball game, right? Well, I'll sing it with you. <laughs> Is that a deal? Well, you'll sing. I'll be with you. Right? <laughs> now the pits. Swung any minute. That's going to put you in the class of the really true music lovers when you sing along with me. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. I've sung along with you uh, in my living room and uh, other places where I've uh, watched the game. <laughs> now the pits. Hey, your husband, the president, is seeing quite a ball game. Cleveland came back and tied Seattle. Seattle got one in, in the tenth. Cleveland also has scored, and they're tied again, 3-3. Three, three. Well, that's, uh, you know, I think two of the best games you could see are the ones in Cleveland and Chicago today. Brand new ballpark in Cleveland. That's right. Now the pitch. Hunley waiting. He swings, fouls it out of play in the right field corner. Well, this has got to come under the heading of a, of a silly question, Hillary. And what I'm going to ask you, who do you think is going to win the basketball game? Arkansas or Duke? Well, I think Arkansas will win, but I think it's going to be a great, great game. You're not going to fly down and see it, are you? No, I can't do that. I wish I could, though, Harry. I'd love to be there. We've seen great basketball in this NCAA tournament. Right. One ball, two strikes. Big pitch. Pop up, foul out of play. And so, Bullinger. On a single to right, would have taken an extra base hit to score another run. But now the try for the shoestring catch. Any kind of a base hit or air pass ball while Pitts would score this Caino. Ground ball. Nice great play by Grace to retire the side. From Grace to Bullinger. No run. One hit. No error. One man left. We go in the bottom of the seventh. The score. Mets 10. Cubs 7. Now listen, you know him, who's here today? The First Lady 
and she's expressed a desire to sing our, our, our song. So, here's how we do it. I hope Gary hasn't forgotten the tune. I hope you haven't forgotten the words. I hope I haven't forgotten the words. And I hope you haven't forgotten the words. Ah, one. Ah, two. Ah, three. Take me out to the floor. Carrying Steve Stone as we go in two. The bottom of the seventh. And boy, the Cubs trailing. Here's Derek May to lead it off. Broken bat. Looper in the short center field. And May is on. One out, one on. And here's Sammy Sosa, who's certainly happy to see. Doc Gooden no longer pitching. He hasn't had a hit of Gooden through his career. I think he's something like nothing out of 10. This time he's facing Eric Hillman. Bullpen busy for the New York Mets as they start getting heated up. The Cubs trail by three. Ground ball. Force out at second. He beats it out at first. So Sosa forces Derek May. Two out, and here's Wilkins facing the left-hander. Gray started the sitting by flying out to left. May blooped a single to center, short center and was forced by Sosa. And now here is Rick Wilkins. Well, a lot of people thought certainly that Dallas Green would be in the right-hander to face Sandberg with the bases loaded in the six and two out. But he stuck with Hillman and Hillman got Sandberg out. Sandberg hit the ball very hard, but right at Kevin McReynolds in left field. Well, I was one of the guys that felt that Dallas was really taking a gamble leaving in Hillman, but Hillman is going to be his fifth starter. And so he figured if I have enough faith in him to eventually start him, he'll probably get Sandberg out. Swan. Boy, he was fooled on that pitch. Toronto is leading the White Sox four to two in the bottom of the eighth. Swung and he missed. What is Hillman, who stands six feet ten? You think he'd be playing basketball? He's born in Gary, Indiana. That's like that's what six feet ten inches looks like on the mound. Now lives in Virginia Beach. The bullpen balls on the field. One ball, two strikes. Boy, you think. Outside. You think you hit three home runs off of Doc Gooden and knock him out and score seven runs. 
they should be winning the ball game, but they aren't. The pitch. Smash foul down the first baseline. Hillman was originally drafted by the New York Mets and came up through their system, but they waited till the 17th round to pick him in the June 1987 free agent draft. He's not overpowering, as we talked about before. He's got a pretty good slider. He does have to mix up his pitches and change speeds, however, as he's not going to overpower too many hitters. Last year, he only fanned 60 in 145 innings. Throw to first. Bright sunshine at the moment. The wind seems to have abated somewhat. It just turned into a beautiful day here. You couldn't ask for a better opening day weather. Wind is still blowing out, but maybe not quite as briskly as it was when the game started. Two balls, two strikes. Pops it up. Easy out. Kemp makes the catch to retire the side. And Hillman is cool off the red hot Cub bats. So, one man left on base. No runs. One hit. At the end of seven, ten to seven. Favor the Mets. Harry Carey back at Rigby Field. Here is Kevin McReynolds leading it off. Bullinger pitches low and outside. The uh, Toronto Blue Jays got three in the seventh and then three in the eighth and now lead the White Sox seven to two in the ninth. Here's a ground ball. Sanchez throws him out. Sanchez not playing shortstop. Even with the departure of Jose Vizcaino, the Cubs are still well stocked at shortstop. Ray Sanchez defensively is as good as anybody, and he certainly is a pesky hitter. And Dunstan had a great spring. And young Jose Hernandez looks like he's the shortstop of the future somewhere down the road. One man out. High fly ball. In fair territory. A double for Bobby Bonilla. He went the other way. Take another look at it as Bobby Bonilla slices this one down the line. Derek May actually lopes after this one for whatever reason. I think he thought the ball was foul. It lands 20 feet fair. And by the time Derek got to it, it's two base hit. Now I'm not sure if that leg is still giving him some difficulty. Bear in mind he only had three or four games of spring training. I'm wondering why Dunson left the game. You don't think he might have. I think they're being careful with him Harry. I think they're going to take their time early and wait and see just how that back responds. Because you'd want your best offensive shortstop of the bunch when you're trailing by three with two innings to go. One ball, no strikes, one out. Two balls, no strikes. Jeff Kemp has had a good day. Three out of four, a home run included. Two RBI. Hot shot on the ground. Sanchez knocks the ball down. The only play he might have had would have been a third base, but Bouchelle had wandered off trying to reach the ball. And he couldn't be in position to take a throw. And this is where the third base coach comes into play. And in this case, it's Mike Kubich. As soon as he sees Ray Sanchez come up with it with no play, you've got to tell Bobby Bonilla, stay right here. And that's exactly what he did. You see in your picture, Mike Kubich is saying, right on the bag. He knows that Sanchez is coming toward him. And if you take the big turn, you might be out. What a four hits in a row after he went out the first time for Jeff Kemp. And he's batted him three runs. Is David Segui. There's a line drive. Well hit. Will score the run after the catch. 
a sacrifice fly by Sagi. And now it's a four run lead. 11 to 7. Two runs batted in for Sagi, and the Mets were kind of surprised that Roland Heeman called him and wanted to complete that deal. They had tried very hard to get first baseman J.T. Snow from California. When that deal fell through, Anthony Young came to the Cubs. But Sagi was still available for a minor league pitching prospect. It looks like he's going to be a good one. Tom Wegman went over to Baltimore, and they figure eventually Wegman is going to be a pretty good pitcher. Here's Jeff McKnight hitting for Hillman. McKnight, an infielder outfielder. <laughs> oh, the Budweiser girls are here. I saw them down in spring training. Hot shot, nice play by Graves. And the inning. So, well, one run, two hits, one left. We go in the bottom of the eighth, and the Mets lead 11 to 7. And Steve Stone, we go in the bottom of the eighth, comes trailing by four. Spend your spring and summer at Wrigley Field where everybody plays. Groups of 20 or more tickets can be ordered for most games this season, including many of the night games. For group sales information, call 312-404-CUBS. We have Mike Maddox, older brother of Greg, pitching for the Mets. Bogart's now playing at third base. Here's Bouchelle to lead it off. Maddox was versatile last year. He appeared in 58 games. The record not impressive at three and eight. The ERA pretty decent at 360s. You take a look at Tim Bogar, who's playing third base in place of Bonilla defensively. Oh, and two of the count. Well, this game is about what we expected. Cubs to get runs, play pretty good defense, but they're pitching questionable, and it was certainly questionable today. You knock out Doc Gooden, you hit three home runs off him, you pound him for ten or so hits, and he's still leading 11 to 7. But I'll say this the fans have certainly enjoyed themselves, and why not? A beautiful day, first game of the season bright sunshine and a lot of hits and a lot of run we're going to show you the three home runs that uh, Tuffy Rhodes hit three consecutive home runs before walking in the sixth to fill the bases Ball outside. Cleveland has defeated Seattle in next inning, four to three. Yankees over Texas, five three. And Bouchelle goes down swinging. Here's Sanchez, who replaced Sean Dunson, the shortstop, an inning ago. Let's pause here for our identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN-TV, Chicago. Here's Dunson, uh, Sanchez batting first in Dunson's place after replacing him at chart, grounding out to Vizcaino, throws him out, two away. Now here is Tuffy Road. There's his first home run on the curveball into the center field corner of the left field bleachers almost out of the ballpark. Here's his second one, headed the other way. Again, in the left center field. And here's the third one. 
in the same direction. High, almost out of the ballpark again. Three straight home runs in the first game of the season. Willie Wilson comes on to pinch hit. And let me tell you something. He still has a chance to do what has never been done by any Cub. His fourth home run in one game. Because he'll come up either this inning or next. Mike Maddox on the hill. He's protecting a four-run lead. Willie Wilson batting for Bullinger. Looks like Randy Myers is going to come on and pitch the ninth inning. He's getting loosened up in the bullpen, or it just could be that he's just getting loosened up just to get loosened up as Dan Plesek is walking in from the bullpen. He started a swing, tried to check, run around, and he's out on strike. Maddox retires on one, two, three at the end of eight. The Mets lead 11 to seven. Harry Carey with Steve Stone. Here's uh, Ryan Thompson facing Dan Plesak, the Cub left-hander. Thompson's had two out of four today. The Mets have pounded out 15 hits. John Franco getting ready for New York. One ball, two strikes. There's a look at Plesak's numbers from last year, but he looked like a different pitcher in spring training. He threw the ball exceptionally well. As you take a look at the hits per innings pitched and a nary an earned run. Fouled it back out of play. One ball, two strikes. Well, I see Ben Stein and Jack Leahy still in their seats in the sunshine behind the Mets dugout. He struck him out. Please act. Continues to pitch well, which he's done all spring long. I wonder if he can start. <laughs> One out. Here's Orsalak. Bounced out his only time up. The big hitters, Vizcaino, has had three hits. Hunley has had two. Ken has had four with three RBIs. Vanilla's had two. Or select. One ball, one strike. Dip that outside corner. When Dan Plesak had his good years with Milwaukee, he had a hard fighting slider. And he just threw a very good one to Arcelat. Bouncing ball to Grace. He's got it. Steps on the back. In another well pitched game in the American League, the hometown Red Sox defeated the Detroit Tigers 9 to 8. Cleveland, the next three innings over Seattle, four to three. The Yankees defeated Texas, five to three. The White Sox batting in the top of the ninth were trailing seven to two, but they've been out quite a while. In the National League, Houston is tied with Montreal, three three after eight. Cincinnati leads the Cardinals 4-3 at the end of seven. Ah, you can't beat fun at the old ballpark. Nothing like young love. Three balls and the strike. Viscaino's had a fine day. 
He walks. You know, there is no doubt that Biscaino is an outstanding ball player. The Cubs had four shortstops. You can only play one at a time. And nobody's going to replace Dunstan. So they wanted to get some pitching. And I think Vizcaino is going to help the Mets considerably. By the same token, I think that Anthony Young is really going to be a maybe a savior for the Cubs. I honestly, on what I saw yesterday, he impressed me more than any other pitcher we've had in the in spring training. I know he threw the ball very well yesterday and I asked Tom Treblehorn after throwing four innings on Sunday when he would entertain the idea of using him again and he said he felt that he would be ready to go on Wednesday if they needed him out of the bullpen and that's where he'll stay for a while. But there he didn't give up anything in four innings and he's got a fastball right around 90 miles an hour. Yeah and he's got a good curveball curveball and the slider. One ball no strikes two out. Ball is a little high, and Wilkins goes out to talk to Plesak. Hunley has had three hits today. Big crowd on him. Hunley, a switch hitter, like Vizcaino. Ball three. Final score, Toronto beat the White Sox. Seven to three. Baltimore is leading Kansas City three to one in the bottom of the six. Three balls and the strike two out. Well, I mentioned the rooftops. I guess I was on radio at the time. A goodly crowd all the way around from left field to right. Three balls and the strike. A hectic day. All four. And Hunley walks. So after getting two out, Plesak walks two. And now he faces a tougher hitter in Kevin McReynolds, who's had one base hit today. One out of four. Plesak is bidding to be one of the four Cup pitchers to emerge unscored upon. And to do that, he'll have to retire McReynolds. A nice story here written by Howie Bisley in the Grand Rapids Press. There's a strike call. is high. Philadelphia is playing in Colorado. They're just getting underway. I guess they have the usual 80,000 there for opening day. Well they've got one more year of drawing four and a half maybe four and a half to five million people Harry and then they move into a somewhat smaller park. There's a hot smash base hit. Another runner is going to score. And it's 12 to 7 now. McReynolds drilled a single pass Sandberg in the right field. Second hit, first run batted in for Kevin McReynolds. Sandberg diving, the ball goes under the glove, and Sammy has some problems with it. And the hit parade continues as 
Now all the Cub pitchers have given up at least one today as the Mets have pounded out 16 hits. Well, Doc Gooden beat you one to nothing if necessary. Beat you two to one if necessary. Beat you three to two, then he can beat you six to five or seven to six or eight to seven. Or give up three straight home runs, get knocked out of the ball game, leave with a victory in, in his hip pocket. There's a high fly ball to center. Should be caught. Tuffy Rhodes is there. So, only one hit. One run. Two men left. We go in the bottom of the ninth. The Mets lead 12 to 7. Back in the ballpark. I knew John Franco would be in there before the day is over. But he can't get a save. The Mets are leading 12 to 7. And... Who's that? Is that Al Jackson down there? That's, that's Tom McCraw. Tom McCraw. He looked a little bit like Al Jackson from the side. He's the hitting instructor. In fact, the coaching staff is Mike Kubich, Frank Howard, Tom McCraw, Greg Pavlik, Steve Swisher, and Bobby Wine. And there you look at John Franco coming back after a number of physical problems. Franco trying to be the reliever he once was. He was 4-3 and three last year, an ERA that even he wants to forget at 520. He picked up just 10 saves, but he had a very much injury plagued year. And Franco at his best is really the key to this Mets team. If he can throw well, they've got a chance to win a lot of ball games. But if he really struggles, the Mets have problems. Well, the crowd giving such standing ovation to Tuffy Rose, who can hit his fourth home run of the day. He's already had three straight home runs, walked his last time up, so that's not an official time at bat. He could have four home runs and four times at bat should he hit one here. The crowd loves the nickname Tuffy. And I hope his mother and family are watching the game in Cincinnati. I didn't hear you, Arnie. No doubt about it. Every sports show on TV will have a Tuffy Rhodes three home runs. First three times at bat. Takes a ball high. Twelve to seven. Ooh, he was swinging for that. That one, he really ripped, but he missed. Two ball, one ball, one strike. We're in the bottom of the ninth. He had a good cut. Fouled it off. Twice John Franco has either led or tied for the lead in the National League in saves. In 1988 with Cincinnati. And again in 1990 with the Mets. He was traded from the Reds to the Mets in exchange for now Cub stopper Randy Myers. One ball, two strikes. Base hit, four for four. He didn't get a homer, but he got another hit. What a day he's had. And it's a shame. We couldn't have a little better pitching after scoring seven runs of Doc Gooden. Hey, where's the first lady sitting now? She's in the bleachers near the foul line. Sandbury, the hitter. 12 to 7 in favor of the Mets. Outside, ball two. Well, a base hit or two, a couple bases on balls, an error or so, a long one. You can make five in a hurry sometimes. Especially with the wind blowing out as it is today. 
Stanko's pitch. Ball three. And Mark Grace would be next. Franco's last real good year was 92 when the ERA was 164. But even in that year, he only chalked up 15 saves. For the last couple of years, just 25 saves combined. The bet. Strike called over the outside corner. The Cardinals have tied up Cincinnati 4-4 at the end of eight. Montreal and Houston are 3-3 going into the 10th. Three balls, two strikes. The home plate area now is in the shadow from the stand. Tuffy Rose. Double play ball maybe out at second base for one. Safe at first. Sandberg forced Rhodes from Bogart to Kent. Here's a Buick game summary. The Mets are leaving 12 to 7. Rhodes, three homers his first three times at bat, and four out of four for the day. Kent, four out of five with a home run for the Mets. He drove in three runs. Here's Grace. Grace has had one hit, one out of three. And the Cubs have done enough hitting, scored enough runs. Ground ball, up with it. Over to first, Kemp. Two away. And here is Derek May. He's two out of four with a Two runs batted in. And although he comes in in a non-safe situation, John Franco can convince Dallas Green that the stuff is back and in the shape it was in 1992. The Mets are going to have a much sunnier disposition as a club. Fastball inside. Sammy Sosa on deck. Twelve to seven, a five-run lead for the Mets. There's a ground ball to right field, a base hit. Here's a runner on third. He will score, and it's a 12 to eight ball game. As May drives in his third run of the day with a single to right. After limited spring training, and I mean really limited, till around 10 to 15 at bats, Derek May has come out today swinging the bat like he had. 75 at bats in the spring. Three runs driven in and three for five. There have been 20 runs scored and 30 hits in this game. There's a drive foul. Way foul. Let's see, they have 18, uh, 18 hits and comes and have 14. That's 32 hits. 20 runs on 32 hits. The accent has been on the hitting, not the pitching. Swung and a miss. Sosa fanned twice against Gooden and then tapped back to him. Then he bounced on the seventh off Hillman. Well, they favor the Mets. There's a high pop fly coming in. Orsalak under it makes a catch, falls down, holds on to the ball, and the Mets have won this ball game by the score of 12 to 8. We'll be back in a moment. The Budweiser plays of the day. The three home runs by rookie Tuffy Rhodes. There's the first one. Almost in the center field stand. Here's the second one. It too is hit in the left center. 
And here's the third one. Certainly a notable feat by the young son of Fiedler, Tuffy Rhodes of the Cubs, the Budweiser plays of the game. Our next telecast will be tomorrow, you know. The uh, leadoff man will be on at 1 o'clock. Well, we had a thrilling ball game from the standpoint of uh, the spectators, but the same thing uh, came a cropper. The Cubs have had a worry of how good their pitching was, and that worry was not alleviated at all today because they, they were beaten 12-8, to eight, outslugged by the lowly New York Mets. All right, the producer-director of Cubs baseball is Arnie Harris. Our associate producer, Joe Cornell. The final score, the Mets have beaten the Cubs 12-8. Harry Carey from Wrigley Field, a good crowd, a fine day, no pitching, and the Mets defeat the Cubs 12-8. Don Gooden now has a record of 27-4 against the Cubs during his, during his career. We'll see you tomorrow in the second game of the series. We'll lead off man to 1 o'clock. So long, everybody. Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN. The Cubs have been brought to you by Budweiser. Beach